You care if I get you on my video? Where's the buffalo? And then that box. Have you ever pressure canned any? Uh, that's a big old cat right there, ain't it? Pressure canned it. What size is he? 18 drop it pound. Tastes oh, almost yeah. as good as mackerel. Hmm. I mean, just really close to good as mackerel. Think he'd weigh over 18? It might be 20. They've been, been fishing all day nearly. I've been out here about two hours. I had nets out already. I already had the nets in the water. Now what kind of fish is this? That's buffalo. That's buffalo. Yeah. And that's another cat. Right there. Yep. <laughs> and you'll have all this skint and processed back home in less than what, three hours? Something like that. Three or four hours worth of work right here? Depending on how it goes. Depending on if I need to do good it or skin out. That's in the box there too. Oh you do? Now, now this carp. Yeah. How many pounds that's up? About forty. About twenty. Yeah. This carp, about the only way of processing it to, to the point of eating it, right, is putting it in a pressure cooker, isn't it? No. What are you talking about the buffalo? No, you got carp too, don't you? That's there's all buffalo. That's all buffalo. Yeah, there might, there's one carp in there. He could grab you got a fish house Which one of them? It's got, got all the. Glass by Obine. The what? A glass right there by Obine. Oh, I know where glass is. Used to have two sawmills there. A long time ago. I don't know. Yeah, west of, west of Obine. Which one of them is it's got all the bones? Buffalo and carp. They got bones. Which one's got the most bones? I mean, buffalo's bony, but we can't cut that bony piece off and you can just cut the ribs out. Have the rib pieces. You do? Mm -hmm. You got bony part down the top of the back. You ever know McKinley Holloway, the mechanic, there at Hornby? Nah, I ain't the 28. I don't know. What's your last name? Butler. Butler. Yeah. Now just this motor alone, if you used to buy it brand new today, it'd probably be about 12 grand. Nine. Nine grand. Yamaha will run you 12 grand. Yamaha will run you 12 grand. Yeah, for the same size. And the boat, if you bought it new, just the hull. Well, that trailer, I don't know. It'd probably be, probably be 10. I'll tell you, tell them. Because of this extension and stuff on it? Nah, it's just a plate boat. All aluminum? seat and he's in the front seat and his daughter was driving the car. He got barely out of out of Obine, took out two pistols, said, okay boy, roll out. <laughs> they slowed down, they got out and they just took off. Will Butler. That's all illegal stuff you're talking about. That was in the thirties, probably the early thirties. You get caught doing something like that, you go jail the rest of your life. Yeah, much less bribing, trying to bribe a police officer like that. You go jail the rest of your life. Will Butler. What's in here? Hollow? Yeah. Really? You can't put nothing in there? That's for the location if you go down. Oh, it is? Yeah, it's got double floor. Oh, does it? So it's got uh, foam in it? I'm not sure if it's got foam in it or not. But I know it's, it's airtight? Yeah. I tell you what, you've gave it, you've given this rascal a workout, hadn't you? Well, my cousin was pulling it about five, six years ago, and he rode off with a gun and he got killed and messed the front up on him. Got killed pulling his boat? Yeah, he, the guy was stopping the road. He come around a curve on him. Lord, his truck, Lord. His truck only had one wheel brake. Oh, Lord. He locked her down. He slid about 20 feet, and then he hit that other guy, and the 
It's a wonder if you didn't tear this. He didn't tear this thing all to pieces in it. Caught them in about two hours. Yeah, they've been out from Turkey. And you figure you got about a thousand pounds of fish right here. Yeah, all together. All together. Oh no, you where are you from? Milan. Right, I know where it is. I used to work for Jerry Smith over. Yeah. Jerry Smith's body shop. I know exactly where it is. Yeah. He worked on an 89 Buick for us. Did he? Uh, $4,900. 89. He originally from come down there around Buford Pulsar territory down there. I don't know. That's what uh, he told me. Yeah, J Jerry Smith was a real close friend uh, to my sister, Betty Crocker. Was it? What's your last name? Jackson. Jackson. Dennis Jackson. I lived there on, uh, right there beside uh, Small Engine place for. Harry Small Engine? Yeah, Harry Small Engine for probably five years. Yeah, that Harry Small. On Gann. That Harry Small Engine man is about uh, fifth cousin by wife. Oh, really? On the Cunningham side. Where you go to church at? Uh, Mount Pleasant. Mount Pleasant? Yeah. Okay. I've seen you around north end of uh, Gann Road. I'm documenting you. Is that okay? <laughs> I don't know if it is okay or not. I like some of your, some of your old <laughs> stories about some of your bootlegger stories. I'm a road that, that's, a true, that's a true tale about the butler now. I don't doubt it. And he got shot later. Did he? My wife and grandmother called a shooting. Yeah, he was a Cemetery. Come on up here and look at this. Mount Pleasant Cemetery. This was probably about the mid 30s. And uh, strawberry picking time, right there next to the cemetery. And a man named Smith, he owned the strawberry field. And he came down there and told Will Butler, he said, You get out of here and leave these women alone. He said, I'm not on your property, I'm not leaving. The Smith man, and he was a deacon at Mount Pleasant Baptist Church. Uh -huh. He said, you will leave. And uh, he went and got his shotgun, came back down there and warned him again. Said, you get out of here. He said, I'm not leaving. Boom, shot him down dead right there. And the Smith man didn't serve any time. They had a hearing on, on it. Violent but bunch, it didn't isn't it? What's going on there? What is it? It's sand bowls. It's where it's, it's where What's going on right there? That sand bowl is where the pressure is coming off the bottom of the that? river. You see that one? Uh -huh. Three of them. They go off at the same time about every 15 minutes. You see the ones back there in the woods? What's right? causing it? It's it's because the river's been so high and it's been so much pressure on the ground, on like the on top of the river grass. and the bottom. The river's so high like this, it puts so much pressure on the bottom. I'm documenting you. Is that okay? Okay. It's sort okay. of like a volcano. It has to release the pressure. Oh, I see. And the thing about it is, you don't know what's going to happen. Uh, it could blow out a huge... Like a big Are you from here? Home. You live around here? I do. I've been watching these things for two weeks. You have? I have a cousin who's... Uh, uh, what do you call it? Archaeologist or whatever oh, yeah. studies all this stuff. Right. And he says that when it goes, it could like just blow out the ground right from under where you're at. He said, stay away from here. Is but it true that they have a, a minor earthquake here just about every night? It is. Really? Yeah, it is. Do they still anticipate that there's possibly a. a an overlap towards having another major earthquake in this area? Well, I'm sure, because we're right on the fault line. And that's one of the things that, that just, my just cousin just also just said. He said, you know, it could be building up to an earthquake. Um, usually, these things are like on the other side of the levee, yes, like where the backwater's at. Yes, ma'am. It's not unusual to see them on that side. It's very unusual to see them on the riverside. What they do when they're on the other side. Good talking to you, brother. Yes, ma'am. Um, it'll come back. Fifteen minutes. It'll come back. She said, "In fifteen minutes, it'll come back." She said, "You can, you can set your watch by the you thing." Can set your watch. And she said, "It's very unusual to see it over here happening over here on this side of the 
of the levy. Sir, thanks for talking to us. Thanks for talking to us. You seem like a pretty good lad. You live around here close? Yeah, dirt old vine. Do you? Yeah. Well, I hope you make make your endeavors. I gotta get in and get them done. There you go. It's work. It's work. It's just a different type of work. But it, it, it it's rewarding. Do you? Been love. Out there all my life. Really? Love getting out there on the water? Yeah. No place like it. I'm gonna roll on. You have a good one. Take care of yourself. Right. I'll see you around. I'll come back down here. Good yes, sir. You about ready for some rubber on your back tires? Good looking little rig. Good looking little rig. Smell fishy. He smells fishy. He smells fishy. Now he getting around it. But you're telling me. I was trying to tell him because he's out here all the time and it's very dangerous and he don't want to listen. But, he didn't like. but, but when, you're telling me that whenever, whenever those goes off, it releases pressure. But it's highly unusual to see that over on this side of, of the, levy. I guess you call it the levee. This right. is a levee right here. Right. Normally it's on the other side of the levee. And what they do when it's there is like the core will come in and they will drill holes to release the pressure to keep it from exploding. Yeah. Basically. basically. Yeah. Exploding. Giving way all at once. Right. But they're just like volcanoes. Just like, that's the only way I know how to describe it. Just like small volcanoes, they're just releasing all this pressure. Have you ever seen it actually go up real high? Uh, yeah. As a matter of fact, when we first started watching this, it was a smaller area. So, of course, it would go up like this high. Right. But the area is getting larger. And so now then, it bubbles up. It's more force to it, like. Right. But it's it doesn't go as high. And you're thinking that this area. could possibly be a sign, as far as something going to give way underneath the new Madrick fault. Well, that's what. Um, like I said, my cousin is an archaeologist, and his wife is a doctor. She's an archaeologist also. Right. And they tell us stay away from here. Don't come near here. So we come every afternoon anyway. My aunt comes with me most of the time. But we've been watching this for about three weeks. And, of course, my whole family, they were commercial fishermen on the river and the lake. Yes, ma'am. Ever. And um, they've not ever seen it. All the locals around here have never seen this before because we see a lot of the local fishermen. Sure, sure. And, and they're like, they don't notice it because they put their boat in and they're gone. Sure. But we... We saw it one day, and so we've been watching it since then. Um, I don't know. I, I had a man tell me yesterday, he said, now, like, there's different fish holes that we go to around here. Right. And he says that's where they came from, was from these sand boils like this. What do you call them, sand boils? Mm hmm Okay. Yeah. Well, that's all I know about it, what I've been told, because, you right. know, I've not ever studied it or anything, but... It's possible that it could be getting ready to give way or something, you yeah, know what? We've been we've been sending videos to my cousin, and he and his wife have been, you know, watching them every night. And the changes, it's so different, because, like, just three days ago... Right. All this, all this was underwater. Right. But you see that little ledge-looking thing right there? Yeah. Where it's the grass? That's, right. That's like... Uh, just like what is that? It's, it's, that looks like it's a piece of slab of concrete. That, right. But it's not. It's actually mud. It is. A gumbo or whatever. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah, because you can tell I threw a stick across it yesterday. But you, you but you have seen it bubbling not just right here, but you've seen it bubbling in other areas over well, here. It's three different places. I don't know if you saw it while ago, but it starts right here in these little twigs. Uh huh. And then right there with that log. Go off right there beside it, and then that little open area and all that right. trash right there in the little open area. And about every 15 minutes, it'll go off 15 to 20, 
20 is the longest, but normally it's about every 15 minutes. But it's they almost are. like old, old faithful, huh? This one starts, and then the one beside the log, and then the one back there. But it's almost like old faithful, isn't it? Yeah, and they all three go at one time when they're going. Well, let's probably fix it. there was only one. Really? Mm-hmm. So something may actually be try something giving away up underneath our Something's feet, huh? Happening. Um, now, what my cousin says is, he says all three of these are like, they're going to connect until it's one big, huge thing is what they're thinking. Is this Amazing. the best view from right here to be able to see the mighty Mississippi? Because I'm actually looking at the main the main channel right back over in that area, right? right but I tell you what, you right back go, over. You can go on the levee and drive down maybe a mile, half a mile. Okay. On the right -hand side. Is it a better view? Yeah. It used to. It, it's more open. It, is it? You can get close to the way the river is right now because it used to be a granary down there. Okay. And you can drive. They don't have a gate up or anything, and you can drive all the way. Can I? Out there, and you can see everything. Okay. It's really did you see all the fish that guy had? No, did he have a lot? Yeah, he had over a thousand pounds. Did he catfish? Is that what he had? Catfish, uh, uh, he had carp, he had grinnel, he had uh, three or four different kinds. But he said he caught all that in less than two hours. Where'd he, where'd he come from? Which direction? He come from back over in that direction. I'm pretty sure you see all those, uh, I've watched you see all those, um, ne uh, those, I guess he's, These aren't his, I don't think, because we watched someone else. Did y'all see him put those out? Uh-uh. Okay, because we've been watching another man fish this side over here. Have you ever jug fished? We have, but we do it different. We just put catfish like a, like yo-yoing, sort of. We just put the, the I see. hooks on the jugs and watch them put like 20 jugs out when they go under, get them and get them up. It sure gotten up but down there on that bin, but they're saying that it's actually going down right now. It is, but in about three days, it's going to start coming up. When it does, it's going to come quick because they're going to release all that from up north. They're going to start releasing those. Coming out of Minnesota and places, and all that, uh, all that, uh, uh, all that snow that's melted down. See, all that has to come here, and then we still have the spring rains to come. And, uh, I don't know what's going to happen here. People are saying we're going to have a hundred year flood here. Really? That's what they're saying. You know, I hope not, but look what's happening up there and everything that's there has to come here. Well, the Ohio's still high too. You know that, right? Yeah. All right. Good talking to you. You too. Have what's your name? I'm uh, Vicki Lebo. Vicki, nice meeting you. You too. Have a safe trip. You got a head full of sense. I'm going to watch out for the gushers. wrong place this whole thing's liable to wind up going off breaking away giving in especially what she's talking about I might want to get on the other side of the levee About a month ago, I was out here. Look at all that where it's all washed right there. About a month ago, I was here, and wasn't none of this underwater. It was high. The water was high, but it wasn't this high. I could still drive out over there. I guess you see where those trees is marked white. That's probably the hundred year high. And if she's talking about it gonna compass that, Lord. Yeah, I don't blow up our jug fishing. 
He done caught him some, some whoppers. 20, 25 pounders. Something that'll drag somebody plumb into the water if they don't have the right kind of equipment and the right kind of skill to be able to pull something like that in with a fishing pole. Of course, with him fishing the way that he's fishing, with a jug and nets, however he's doing it, I'm pretty sure he's trained enough that it ain't going to bother him none. He seemed like a pretty skilled individual. Let's see here now. We're coming right on up in here. minutes, I don't see it gushing. Well, let me see. It's been about 15 minutes since she was talking about that gushing. Let's see if it's timed out just about like Old Faithful towards going off about every 15, 20 minutes. Yeah, you don't ordinarily see the mighty Mississippi this high. Mighty Mississippi, she catches a lot of water. She catches a lot of everything. Especially this time of year. All the melting of the ice and snow. Then the spring rains. I think this year, though, it's... It's been worked over more so this year, probably, than it has... In a few years, like right there, you can see see that barge right there. Ain't no telling what he's got on that boat. smells fishy. I guess anytime you get around a river it's going to smell fishy. Especially one this size. Saying the water's receding right now, but then it's going to go back up. And maybe looking at a hundred year flood.
I'm going to say it's probably an underground canyon that because the waters is so high it's pushing an air bubble up to the top and the air bubble has to reach a certain amount of pressure before it's released and then whenever it's released it only releases a certain amount of air to neutralize I see some bubbles right over there to neutralize the pressure then after the pressure gets neutralized then it basically caps itself off to the extent that it quits showing transparency outside the water here and then it goes through another cycle because the water is going down it may be spacing itself out further apart instead of it being every 15 to 20 minutes it may be every 20 to 25 or maybe 25 to 30 minutes because I still haven't seen other than a couple bubbles come up for a couple seconds and then it quit I haven't seen nothing else that has showed any type of signs of releasage up underneath its uh, strenuous pressures I see it now see it right there Now that one, she was right. See that one? See it? Then there's one right over there that's releasing. Every 20, 25 minutes. Be darn. I'm going to go to the right. Because I don't think I've never been on this levee here going down this way. I've been on lots of different levees down in here. But this one here, I don't think I've been on. She said there's an old granary down here or something. considered bottom land, rich, black dirt, probably some of the richest dirt in Northwest Tennessee. Well, you sure can't take the black top, or it don't look like you can. No, 
Maybe I could have taken the black top. Tennessee said it was some of the most plentiful game life that he had ever encountered in his whole entire life. He loved Northwest Tennessee. Of course, back in Davy Crockett's time, there was bear that has now migrated from this area because of the intense heat of the planet warming up. But whenever he was in Northwest Tennessee in the early 1800s, there was bear that roamed these areas. Just like there's small bear today that roam the areas up towards the Appalachian Mountains. The, uh, they have some pretty big hunts up there in the Appalachian Mountains towards hunting a little bear, little brown bears probably get about four maybe five foot high at the very most nothing like the grizzly yeah I might should have taken the black top away I don't know
Well, there you got it. Hopefully the 100 year flood won't hit. But you can't never tell about these rivers. Especially whenever you got that kind of meltage that's coming off the, off the upper end. Thanks for listening. See ya.